All right, let's have some fun today. We all love the feeling of opening that package, that letter, and finding our new ancient coin, the latest addition to our collection. Today, we're joined by a fellow collector. He prefers to remain anonymous, but he has contributed a lot to this channel in the past by providing footage of his coins. Recently, he received a massive number of coins, and he filmed the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is to shut up and let him go over his new coins. It's an entire hour of very high quality coinage and the man is really knowledgeable. So enjoy. I'll uh, start with the first package. I have no idea in what order these are in. So we'll just um, have to look and see. So these are all from one source. See, and she had been holding uh, a bunch of packages for me and uh, I requested them to send them. So here they are. Let's start with the first bunch. I'll move the package aside so we can better see the coins. Okay, here is uh, a pretty big bunch of coins. Let's uh, start with this one. So this is a feature sale win at uh, C and G. It is, I think it's easier if I show the labels. So it's a federal coinage from just before the Federation fell to Rome after siding with Philip V of Macedon. We'll put that one here and move on to the next coin. I apologize for any wheezing and sneezing because I'm a little bit sick having been abroad for a few weeks. But um, let's just move on. This is an uncertain stator. This is also from CNG, and uh, th this coin actually sold before at uh, I think it was Savoca or Navil Numismatics, but uh, I did not pick it up. I rectified the issue by picking it up at uh, CNG for a fairly hefty price. Oh yeah, as we can see here, the Federation was copying the copying the uh, style of, uh, uh, well, the popular style of uh, Pegasus Athena on their stators that uh, originated from Corinth. This one has... Uh, um, a sphinx, a winged, uh, winged sphinx, and uh, what was the? Uh, I'm not uh, uh, that well versed on the uh, on the terminology of this specific creature, but uh, it is for my. Levant set because the coin is potentially from the Levant area with the cities of uh, Biblos and so on. Next up, 
for my second Punic War set. We have this uh, 3 8 shekel minted during the Punic War. On the obverse, we see the common design of Tanit, a goddess, and uh, on the reverse, a horse. This is uh, uh, this is Electrum. I am not sure about the exact purity of the gold, but yeah, it's it's a rare piece. I was happy to pick it up for for what I did. Next up, also for the second Punic War set. Um, this is uh, from the fifth democracy minted in Syracuse. The fifth uh, democracy came to fruition after the fall of uh, uh, fall of the the dynasty of uh, here uh, the was it Euronid dynasty the correct term. And uh, the democracy was in place for a brief moment before the city capsized to Rome. Neat piece, a bit darker than I anticipated, but I actually like that. And next up, we got this piece from Bambike Manbok. It is a very rare die drum, crude, but uh, unfortunately expensive. This was presumably minted soon after Alexander the Great took over the city because it is minted in the name of Alexander, Alexandroi, I think it uh, read to be specific. Uh, on the obverse is a deity. I do not remember the name, I apologize so much all at once. Next up, actually, a coin that I sent to be consigned, but it broke in transport, so we did not actually sell it. And then a purchase from uh, a private purchase for my Tarsos set. Uh, on the obverse it is a deity on a hippocamp. Uh, above some water you can see the water below. And a marine deity on the reverse with a trident. This is a very rare piece. And uh, the person I got this from actually upgraded their coin, so I picked this up from them. So that was the first bunch of coins. We move on to the second bunch of coins. Another big pile. Let's see, first of all, uh, this I remember being a bit of a knee jerk bit. Have to see how it is in hand. It is by Pompey the Great, minted during the Roman Civil War. 
it is a nice coin has some flatness on the face here on the right side but the reverse is uh, about as nice as I as I wanted looking at it now the flatness on the face isn't too bothersome so I think I'll be I'll be keeping this coin despite the bit being a bit of a knee jerk one I think the hammer was uh, 325 or 350 nicer ones have sold for the same but the prices have come up since next up we have uh, an Augustus piece a fairly nice left facing portrait uh, in case uh, some weren't aware I do collect Augustus as one of my main collections and then we have uh, Apollo on the reverse finer style than usually found found on uh, Augustus's coins moving on okay th this is a weird one because the coin seems positively genuine even has some uh, crystallization but what makes this interesting is that the reverse is an eastern one of Augustus's while the obverse I believe I was able to I was able to die match to an Iberian one so we have an eastern reverse and a Spanish obverse and um, so far I have no idea what to make of that the specific types for these dies they were minted a couple of years apart with which also makes uh, things interesting moving on I got such a big pile of plastic already um, okay more Augustus uh, this I feel like I got extremely lucky picking this one up at CNG I think I paid 475 or something like that before fees it is a very rare Augustus piece and um, I think I found 1930s provenance for this to go with it very happy with this purchase we got all the tickets from previous sales as well okay more Augustus Yeah, many of the coins here have uh, all the provenances I haven't really mentioned them some don't have uh, that much info but this one I believe was at the very least 1930s provenance as well I found an auction uh, an auction with this coin okay we lost the Sun so the lighting is gonna be changing a bit and yeah you got the uh, Mars and the elephants on that coin a somewhat rare Augustus piece more for my second Punic War set this is uh, minted in Tarentum on the Cartaginian occupation I love the style on the obverse here 
Otherwise, it is uh, in the style of the earlier Tarantum pieces. But what makes these uh, occupation coins interesting is that they were minted in the... They are essentially second, uh, not second, but uh, half shekel coins. While uh, before this, the city was minting diagrams. So they switched over to a Punic denomination during the occupation. Moving forward. Another Tarentum piece from during the occupation. Interest, interestingly, this specific type has uh, somewhat flooded the market after I purchased this, so the value has come down, but I am very happy with my piece. This type I have an issue with because there was a splendid coin a few years back. I wanted to bid on it, I stayed up to bid on it, and uh, during the live bidding, the coin was never offered for sale to those online, so a floor bidder got it for very cheap. This one uh, originally sold, uh, oh yeah, I've been forgetting to show the labels. Originally sold at uh, the Nomos, uh, at the Nomos auction house, then sold uh, for more at CNG. But she, seeing how sharp the strike was, I felt. Oops, not gonna drop that one. It's a bit crystallized, so don't want to drop this one. I saw how sharp it was and uh, figured I'd uh, bid on it. Moving forward from the large amount of uh, Kyrene pieces that have showed up. Nice complete bust uh, with the lost plant on the reverse. I don't remember the name of the plant in English, but it was used as a spice by the Romans and many peoples abroad. It uh, uh, growing this plant. Uh, was a, a lucrative business for the Kyrenaikans and they protected the secret pretty well. The plant is currently thought lost to time. We have some ideas uh, of the genius of the plant, uh, of the uh, type of plant, but uh, for now that's uh, about as much as we have. The plant was used uh, as a spice in wine and food and all sorts of things. Wouldn't be surprised if it had some medical applications as well. More coins. This is harder than it seems in just one take. Alrighty then, Augustus, this I believe I got uh, very cheap, the coin was I think uh, 1.1k before fees, the obverse being just Augustus, like on many of, of his coins, and then on the reverse, uh, in the form of a deity, it is uh, thought that this might be depicting Julia, Augustus's daughter, 
And uh, one reason I think in a vacuum, this coin itself, I think is worth way more than what I paid for it. But afterwards, I also found several old auction sales for this coin. I think it also went back to 1930, uh, 30s. And uh, the next one, more Augustus. If you couldn't figure it out, Augustus is a big one. Left-facing Iberian bust on the obverse. With an arch on the reverse. Nice, somewhat rare piece to fill up the collection. Oh yeah, did I? No, it didn't have a label. Didn't forget to show that. And uh, then, from the Roman Civil War, this coin is an especially popular one, with the obverse thought to be depicting Vercingetorix, the Gaulish warlord who challenged uh, Julius Caesar. On the reverse we see uh, we see some uh, Gallic soldiers. Yeah, it's a fairly worn one, but these are expensive and uh, I couldn't justify spending thousands on, on a really good one. That's perfect for me. A budget piece. And... Uh, well, can't say more Augustus, more like Octavian. So on the obverse on this coin, we have the bust of Octavian. A bit porous, but uh, porous, but uh, still a nice obverse. And on the reverse, a reference to Agrippa who was uh, Octavian, later on Octavian's and Augustus's right-hand man and a childhood friend. Agrippa ended up uh, marrying Augustus's daughter, Julia, who we saw earlier. And uh, in some ways, I think it is fair to say, with all the honors and privileges, handed to Agrippa. He could be considered to be the first junior emperor of Rome, a tradition that uh, was only popularized later on during the Imperial Roman period. And uh, as an Agrippa fanboy, he is forever, to me, the second emperor of Rome. So, another Civil War coin minted under Cato, and this is uh, somewhat copying the design of his uh, of the previous Cato, I think minted in 89 BC or something, something like that. Nice style. pleasing coin, all in all. And we just keep going. I think the other other boxes have uh, way fewer coins in them. Let's see. Another second Punic War piece, I'll have to see about this in hand to decide whether to keep it or not. The price was fairly affordable. It is minted by the Bretians. The reverse is all sorts of uh, screwed up. Not sure if the phone even properly picks it up. 
I have no idea what happened to this. It's kind of fun though. The obverse is nice, reasonably nice. But yeah, can go wrong with getting this for under a hundred. More Octavian. A somewhat uh, worn obverse. And uh, an okay reverse. Uh, pretty over cleaned. I'll have to see if I'll sell this one down the line. Okay, more Augustus. So this is uh, minted under the Manier Floros. And the reverse is a clear self-reference being a beautiful flower and the Manier himself being Floros. You, you get the joke. See, this I think was one of the better deals as well. We have a rare piece with uh, the busts of Octavian and Julius Caesar facing each other. And another reference to Agrippa on the reverse. So it was minted with the same the same die. Uh, no, actually not the die match, but uh, I mean the die design. Okay. Next up is one of the special pieces I would say a very special piece minted uh, at uh, Numismatic Ars Classica on the obverse we see a bust and a reference to the authority who minted this coin Rufus on the reverse, the Dioscuri. But what makes it special is that the bust on the obverse matches uh, quite well to the known busts of Brutus. So that makes this the budget Eitmar uh, featuring what is currently thought to be the bust of Brutus. So this is the affordable way to get his bust. Well, I shouldn't say affordable. That coin hammer for 5.5k, I thought it would go up to 7 or more. But in crude condition, you can get this type for under 1k. Still a very expensive type, but nothing like the Eidmar. And that's why I call it the budget right more. And uh, another pile with the coin that's uh, very special to me. A type that I hunted for long. And uh, with, I think, my favorite obverse die of the series. Also from Ars Classica. Basically this is uh, minted after a war Rome had uh, against a Macedonian usurper. After the war ended, Rome, after the war ended with Rome winning, 
they figure that the Macedonians themselves as people were not at fault for the war, or at least they wanted to keep up the pretense of being the good guys. So these coins were minted under what was supposed, uh, supposedly a peace legate, legatio, with an offering of an olive branch on the reverse. This is uh, quite in the style of the earlier First Marys types that uh, some of us may be familiar with. Okay, moving forward. Here we go. Bit of a st struggle. <clears throat> uh, next piece is uh, is another oddity which I bit it on ages ago and it ended up being being held in the US until I'm now getting my hands on it. So we see the typical Ephesian, well Ephesus is the city, uh, the typical Ephesus uh, design with a B and the letters referencing the city but this piece obviously was not used for any sort of uh, trade it is way too thin any kind of uh, where would uh, or any kind of uh, stress would uh, just about destroy this piece. It is thought that this was uh, a so-called Karen's Obel, an offering that was uh, meant for the afterlife. Often these were just uh, ordinary obols, but sometimes we see these gold pieces that are presumed to have been created specifically for the purpose which I guess is supported by the design being that of a coin that was in circulation. And then a type that uh, I feel I got for very cheap and uh, the description, nothing unusual. It's a Pergamon style tet minted under Elmenes the second. But what makes this uh, this one special is uh, the reverse. We see this uh, this. Uh, uh, hold on, I'm. Uh, shooting blanks right now. Um, this um, well, basically reference to the magistrate who minted this coin and this specific the specific magistrate oversaw, uh, oversaw the switching from the dynastic coins like this one to the civic snake basket uh, Sistophoric standard coins. We find the same uh, same uh, magistrate also referenced on the very first Sistophoric texts. This a fairly rare piece that due to the condition went uh, somewhat cheapish. I think it was like 200 USD hammer. Anyway, moving forward, we have this uh, Athenian looking piece, 
and for what we know it might be, but uh, currently this design is uh, thought to have been instead minted in Egypt by some uncertain late pharaoh to pay for mercenaries. Egypt didn't have uh, a tradition of minting coins. They minted some rare ones, like this gold uh, stator with a windpipe and necklace and a horse on the other side. But uh, nothing that was... Uh, that was... Uh, in any large quantities. These uh, Athenian style tets minted in Egypt were probably the first or among the first large emissions of coins minted by Egypt. Well, can't say by Egypt. These were minted either under some rebelling pharaoh or under the Persian rule of Egypt. And that was the first box done. No, no it was not. We have one more coin here. One more coin also from Nak. Minted also for the Second Punic War set, minted under Hieron the Second, but directly referencing his son Gelon the Second. Beautiful piece. Presumably, this might be Gelon's bust on the obverse. It uh, differs from the, it slightly differs from the busts we see of Hieron himself. And uh, the name Gelon referenced on the legend here. Okay, moving forward. That was the first box done. I imagine that the other boxes have uh, fewer pieces per box. Next up, and this one, let's uh, open it up. find from here. Yeah, this time just one pile of coins. Starting off with some gold. It is a direct from a recent CNG feature. Kind of a knee jerk bit. With the prices of directs having been high, I felt the price was okay at the time. It's, uh, it's minted with a somewhat worn die, but I think it retains some some pleasing style. Being gold, it should be quite easy to clean chemically. Oh, yes, there's the swear word, clean. Might look into cleaning up those uh, that gunk, but we'll see. Might also just leave it like this. Nice piece, uh, not a late. Derek that I've been hunting, but uh, well, 
finally got got myself a Derek, which was essentially the gold equivalent to the Persian Siglos, weighing about the same as a Stator. And then another coin that I think I got for a good price from a CNG feature, uh, no, not feature, but the uh, e-auction. You can see that the coin has been double struck. You see remnants of the first strike on the face and uh, around here, as well as on the edges and kind of all over. But uh, I think the coin retains its charm. It's incredibly sharp as far as these go. And the reverse is great as well. Also signs of the double strike on the reverse, but the design remains quite complete. And you can see the full sword in the hand. It often wears off on most coins of this type. Whew. Yeah, this is, could say, exhausting. I think this is the biggest unpacking I'll ever do. Next up, we find this uh, this odd uh, new style pet that was minted under the Roman occup occupation of Athens. So basically, Mithridates, who was, uh, you could say, one of the last uh, Hellenistic great rulers, challenged Rome in the Mithridatic Wars. And uh, Athens switched allegiance and uh, they joined the side of Mithridates. And uh, Rome did not like this, so they invaded. And after Athens' defenses failed, and Sulla, the Roman general, took over Athens, we saw these new style tets minted. So you could say these are Roman. Yeah, Roman Athens coins. And more heritage auction pieces. Let's see how we have to take this off. Yeah, don't want the staples near my coins. Off you go. Here, a heritage feature auction sale. This coin is a is an Aureus minted under Octavian. Or was it Augustus? I think it was Octavian. But NGC did not slap this because despite being genuine, they saw that it had some... Well, they said that it had some tooling. And typically I avoid tooling. But in this case, the coin went for the starting bid. And I could not resist. Uh, Heritage or the numismatists presumed that the tooling was here in front of the face. But uh, looking at the coin in the photos and now in hand, I think tooling is the slight uh, piece at the back of his head. 
nothing to really bother me too much. A very nice, simplistic, stylistic reverse design. And I finally have an Aureus of Augustus's, being the underbidder and a few coins before. If I am not mistaken, that is the second box done. I'll just take this off the picture. It's not really a new coin. It was a failed consignment. Next up, another white box, unlabeled. We are clocking at uh, about 45 minutes. It's a long unboxing, hope I'm not uh, boring you. Ooh, yeah, some Roman numismatics pieces. Whoops, let's correct that. Uh, they have been in the news recently for some trickery. But these coins have no involvement on that. Let's see. First of all, ah oh yes, it's another piece from the first emperor of Rome in this uh, membrane kind of holders. Also with an earlier provenance. Nice piece overall. Somewhat rare. Was missing it from the Augustus Octavian set. And those who did not know, Augustus was uh, uh, previously called Octavian before being given the title of Augustus by the Senate in 27 BC. Coins minted before that were, min were in the name of Octavian. Then a fantastic piece Extremely rare piece with the Neapolis design on the reverse. Full head of the man-headed bull on the reverse. Uh, I think you could say Nike above crowning the man-headed bull. Nike because this is a Greek design. We do not know why this Manier decided to use this uh, Neapolis design. It might be that he had some uh, heritage. He traced back to that city in the Greek times. And I totally forgot my hammer, but I guess uh, the video is long enough for me to Start hammering away at these coins. <clears throat> I don't do slabs, so all of these will be broken out sooner rather than later. So here, an Augustus Denarius minted under the authority of the Manier Messin. Uh, Messinius Rufus, 16 BC. Uh, so hard to even film this. Yeah, 
A few hammer strikes on the edges, the coin remains safe, but the slap is a goner. No slap survives intact in this household. Few more slabbed pieces, it seems. Ah, uh, yes. From a stack bower sale of uh, the uh, of the Salton collection, a beautiful Ptolemy the First Tet. A bit unusual style, very nice. I love this one. It was also expensive, but you make do. Reverse, above average, but not quite on the level of the upverse. Specifically got this for the upverse style, which I thought was uh, really, really beautiful. And you see on this one also the small delta here on the bust. We are not sure what that means. It's unlikely the die engraver. So the speculation on what that is referencing is welcome. And then another second Punic War piece. This time from Agragas which was briefly controlled by the Carthaginians. You got my household plants there. So hard to film these slabs. Uh, you have this Zeus on the obverse. I like how they uh, can say negative space, but uh, the field is uh, flat. And then they engraved some details on the field with the space in between being flat like the fields instead of the whole bust protruding from the field, if you get what I mean. And on the reverse, there is an eagle. A nice, nice coin. You saw my striped shirt. Alrighty then, now on to the last box. Yes, the last box. It is a bigger one. I'm not sure what, uh, what coins are even left or if this one has any, any coins in it. That's a nice problem to have, isn't it? Too many coins. Loads of tape on this one. Okay, here we go. Still got some tape. That's better. Okay. We might have some paperwork. No, actually, not paperwork. It is just large ways of uh, sending the coins with this uh, nice, nice pieces of uh, paper, thick paper. 
These are from Taller and Foul. Or is it Taller and Foul? Uh, Foul, don't know. So, I think we got four coins left. Alright. No, it can't be. Um, there was one coin. Pictured here that was not in this box. We'll have to investigate. So, first from a collection of Roman Dinarii, another Augustus piece, a Spanish one with a trophy on the reverse. Nice piece, a bit overcleaned. That happens. Oh. Actually, let's see. These should be. Yeah, let's not drop the package. These should be included. We can see in just a minute what was uh, missing. Oh, actually, I think I... No, that's not the missing piece. Okay, let's look into this. Another coin from the Roman Denarius collection. An Augustus piece. Minted under Marius. Who minted some of the more expensive and rare coins of Augustus's. However, this one not as rare or to be honest as nice of a design as the others. And then this I think beautiful depiction of Victory, uh, Victory the goddess with Octavian on the river standing on the on the orb of uh, no, can't remember the English term. I apologize. I was missing this type from the collection. I'm very happy with uh, getting one that has such a nice victory on it. And then a coin with possibly nine, 1900s provenance, but uh, no way to confirm that. This is uh, from the collection of uh, an archaeologist and his son. Uh, the name escapes me right now. But it is the Speculatores, Speculatorum type, Antony Legionnaire Denarius. The Speculatores were like uh, this, uh, this uh, section of the army that handled the general scouting, intelligence, and so, so on. Let's see if the coin I was missing was placed underneath the others, and there it is. A good way to finish off this unpacking. Also for the second Punic War set. This one, we are not 100% sure of the mint. Often thought to have been a Kragas. I should have displayed all the coins like this to really make them pop. The lighting isn't the best for this uh, unpacking. So we have an elephant on the reverse and the head of Melkart on the obverse. Some say that this uh, depiction of Melkart might have 
the features of Hannibal, but I think that's just marketing talk like we have with the Tribute Penny, Penny Denarii. So that was a big bunch of coins finished at just one hour. Uh, I'll still go through all the plastic as well as my own documentation to confirm that all of the coins that were supposed to be arrived have arrived. But I am very happy to finally have these coins in hand. Some have been in the US for a few years. Now, finally, uh, I asked CNG to send them to me. And um, yeah, that's about it, folks. I guess uh, if uh, classical numismatics need some of the coins in uh, in the future videos, you'll see them in more detail with additional information. This was a very brief explanation for each given coin. So thank you all. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.